Hey guys, I'm Saurav. Welcome to the channel. Today in this video, we are going to talk about the perfect shutter speed and FPS for recording videos. Disclaimer, there is no one perfect shutter speed and FPS for all the situations. You have to change the settings according to the situation and the kind of shots you want. And that is exactly what we are going to talk in this video. Irrespective of what camera you use, this video will be helpful because all the cameras actually work in the same manner. I know you didn't know this. I know I told you a very important secret. So maybe you should consider subscribing to the channel and I've already wasted a lot of time. So without wasting any time, let's get started. First, let's quickly understand the concept of frames per second and shutter speed for videos. If you're well versed with these concepts, you can jump to this particular time frame and watch the rest of the video. FPS is frames per second. For example, this video is being shot at 30 FPS. What the camera is doing essentially is capturing 30 frames in one second. And you're seeing these frames one after the other and that is why you're seeing a smooth video. What does shutter speed mean? The shutter speed is not actually for videos. Secret number two, let me explain. The shutter speed is actually for photos. For example, if you're taking a picture at shutter speed, say 100th of a second, the shutter opens for 100th of a second, light comes in, the shutter closes and you get an image. So when you're capturing a video, let's say 30 frames per second, the shutter speed 100th of a second is the shutter speed for each individual frame in the video. Shutter speed controls two things. One is the amount of light hitting the camera sensor and two, the motion blur. If you use a slower shutter speed, the motion blur will be higher. Very simple, right? Now that we have a basic understanding of what frames per second and shutter speed mean for videos, let's talk about how to use these settings for recording videos. If you want to capture video that looks close to what real life does from our eyes, you should prefer shooting at 30 frames per second. That is what I am filming right now. Most of the cinematic films are shot at 24 or 25 frames per second. You might say that the difference between 24 and 30 is just 6 frames per second and technically you're right, but it does make a difference when you're watching the video. 24 FPS being 6 FPS lesser than 30 FPS that gives a much more natural look is what helps to sell the cinematic effect. You have to decide, do you want a much more natural look? Go with 30 FPS. If you want a much more cinematic look, go with 24 FPS. On the other hand, if you are shooting at let's say 50 or 60 FPS, the videos will be much more smoother than real life. And remember, smoother doesn't always mean better. I used to shoot at 60 FPS, but it didn't look natural. That is why I settled down with 30 FPS. Again, that's my personal preference. If you like the ultra smooth look, go ahead and use it. Right at this point, I would have loved to show you how a 60 FPS video looks like, but I can't because this video is exported at 30 frames per second. This is super important to understand. A video can't have a variable frame rate. Like for example, if you're shooting for two minutes, you can't say that the first one minute will be a 30 FPS video. The second one minute will be a 60 FPS video. That's not how it works. We have talked about shooting at 24 FPS all the way till 60 FPS. But what if we want to go beyond this range, meaning higher than 60 FPS and lesser than 24 FPS. Let's talk about that. When you shoot at 120 FPS and you play back the video at 120 FPS, you won't notice much of a difference. When you play back the same video at a lower FPS, you get what is basically called slow motion. The reason this is happening is because you're capturing 120 frames in a second, but you're only viewing 30 frames in a second. So suppose for example, you captured a one second video at 120 FPS. When you're watching it at 30 FPS, you are taking four seconds to view that. A one second moment stretched to a four second moment and hence it's slow motion. The reason you're able to stretch it out is because you have captured those extra frames. One mistake that a lot of beginners make is they capture the video at 30 FPS and now they're trying to slow it down in post processing. The problem is the videos will look choppy because you have not captured those extra frames to fill in the gaps. You can try optical flow and it will give a slightly better result, but it is no way as good as slowing down a higher FPS video. On the opposite side of slow motion videos are time lapses. This video is being shot at one frame per second. Since it is played at 30 frames per second, 
What happens in 30 seconds, you see that in one second. And that is why the resulting output is a time lapse. Mind blowing explanation, right? I know, you're welcome. General rule for deciding the shutter speed for recording videos is the 180 degree shutter rule. You might have heard about it before. It's very simple. Just double the frame rate and you have your shutter speed. Is this a good rule? Absolutely. I use it 80% of the times for recording my videos. The rest 20%, I'll get that to it in a second. When you're shooting indoors under controlled lighting, it's easier to shoot at a wider aperture. Even if the video is overexposed, you can dial down the light intensity and fix it. The problem is shooting outdoors during daytime. If you want to follow the 180 degree shutter rule to get natural motion blur and still want to shoot at wider aperture to get that shallow depth of field, you need to use a variable ND filter. This is a must have if you're recording videos outdoors. I've seen a lot of people cranking up the shutter speed to compensate for the exposure and the videos look choppy, the motion blur is not natural, don't do that, the videos don't look professional, use a variable ND filter. This one is by Nisi, it's a true color, 1 to 5 stop variable ND filter. It can reduce light from 1 stop all the way till 5 stops which is a very good range for shooting in daylight. The advantage of having this variable ND filter over a fixed ND filter is you can adjust the intensity just by rotating the filter and get perfect exposure in daytime even when following the 180 degree shutter rule. I've used a lot of variable ND filters in the past and I've faced two issues. One is the fake color cast and second vignetting. You don't get the exact same colors like you would without the filter. Well, that's not the case with this one. The colors are absolutely on point with filter, without filter, they look pretty much the same and hence the name true color. I didn't even face the issue of vignetting even when shooting in different focal lengths. It's raining, it's snowing, I don't have to worry because the nano coating makes it waterproof. I'm not saying this just because Nisi has sponsored this video, it's my honest opinion according to my experience with this VND, I feel this is a must have and if you're a cinematographer, this purchase is going to be totally worth it. Now you know the 180 degree shutter rule and how to set the frames per second. One tip is don't shoot at higher FPS in low light. If you're shooting at 120 FPS, as we saw, the shutter speed should be 1 to 50th of a second. You have to boost the ISO and the video quality is not that good. When I'm shooting in low light, what I make sure is there's enough ambient light, it's not pitch dark and I'm shooting maximum at 60 frames per second. That way I don't have to use a very fast shutter speed and I can still slow the video to 50%. Coming to the important part of the video, as I said, 20% of the times I do not use the 180 degree shutter rule. This rule is used to get natural motion blur. Two scenarios where I break this rule is one, when I'm shooting in low light and there's not a lot of motion going on, I shoot at a slightly slower shutter speed. Since there's not a lot of motion, you won't understand. I can lower down the ISO and get a slightly better video quality. The second scenario is exactly opposite of this. Suppose there's a fast moving object and the motion blur is too much for you, use a faster shutter speed. For example, in this particular shot, I intentionally used a faster shutter speed and you can see the lemon appears to be sharper than the video where I followed the 180 degree rule. This rule is a good starting point but there will be times where you can break it and you should break it. That's it for this video guys. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, press the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel that supports me, encourages me to make more high quality videos for you people. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.